So today I'm going to teach you how to create an awesome drone for your main stage template and walk you through every step of the way. I definitely recommend watching this tutorial though first if you've never used Mainstage or are still fairly new to things, as I'm going to assume prior knowledge from this tutorial. But if you've been using the program a bit, let's get straight into it. First things first, I'm going to load up a really generic shimmery pad sound. This is one from a collection I made which you can download from this video. Shameless plug, I know. Anyway, let's crack on. So let's go to the concert level and we'll copy and paste to the concert level. Just ignore this message, it's just a warning to let you know what you're doing, that you actually are copying something to the concert level. And we can just check that we can hear it and all good. Then if we navigate to the MIDI input and we select keyboard none. This is really important as we'll see later. Now I'm just going to do a bit of an audio routing. I'm now going to create an auxiliary bus at the concert level and then send the drone audio through this. So if you go auxiliary and press create and we're in business. Now we just need to do the audio routing. So I'm going to go bus 7. And I'm going to send the patch, sorry, the channel strip that's called Shimmer. And I'm going to connect that to Auxiliary 7 and rename Auxiliary 7 to be Drone. So we've called that Drone Bus now. And I'm going to select Drone Bus for the output of the shimmer pad patch. I'm just going to switch back to keyboard keys just to check that the audio is going where it should be. And you can see it is because the audio from the shimmer is going to the drone bus and so we're all good. So that's a bit of a whistle stop tour of audio routing in main stage. But that's not why we're here. So if you come with me to up here and we go to scripter and we're going to load in the worship drone or drone script. This is available via a link in the description. And if we press run script just a few times just to make sure, then we're well on our way to having our drone. Now, if we go to the layout button up top and we move into layout mode, then we're going to create the architecture in the main stage layout region such that we can really trigger drones of different keys essentially. So I'm going to create a background and I'm going to make a nice panel. I'm going to change it to this glossy black color and I'm going to drag it out and make it a bit bigger. And now I'm going to create a load of buttons essentially that will enable me to send MIDI notes to the drone pad generator which we're trying to build and this is really where things start to get going. So you can kind of imagine we're going to have one for each key essentially. So we're going to have 12 buttons C through to B. So now I'm creating the buttons. I drag the first button in from the bottom on the panel controls section and now I'm just using copy and paste to create the remaining buttons. I'll probably just do a few for now and we'll come back and do the rest later just so we can test the core functionality is working before we move on. Main stage layout mode can be a bit annoying if you noticed me in the previous video struggling at different points so just persist with it and eventually it will work i think is the best way to say it so now i'm going to select midi port 10 to be honest it doesn't really matter which one we pick the main thing to make sure is just that the note is what you want it to be essentially so the first one i'm going to set to be c second one i'm going to set to c sharp and then d and so on and so forth I like to just make the MIDI port logic remote though. This is just for my own sanity really. Now I'm going to drag a text box in and I'm going to unclick show frame around the text. So now I'm going to give each button a key and that's going to match the note which we assigned just a second ago. And positioning a bit nicer than before copying and pasting and dragging in line and now we're going to make this one C sharp as you might imagine. So let's do it again and we'll call this one D of course. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to drag a button and I'm going to place it underneath. This is really crucial as this will be the control that allows us to turn the drone on and off. Without this none of it will work essentially.
and I'm not really going to bother to change the MIDI port assignment for this one as it doesn't really matter. Just do a bit of cosmetic stuff as ever. This is really so we can leave ourselves space a bit later on so we can put the other buttons in for the remaining keys that we've not done now. If I copy another text box and I'm going to call this state, this will be the state of the drone essentially and just give us an indicator visually of whether it's on or off. In the appearance section I'm going to leave the colour to be yellow such that we can really see when the drone is active and when it's not. So let's go back to edit mode. If we select the state button now we're going to map this such that it can turn the drone on and off. So if we go to drone and we go to scripter and we go to drone trigger then we've just mapped the correct functionality. Now if we go to the drone fader down here and we map the volume of the drone bus to this then we'll be able to control the volume of the drone which is really useful obviously for live performance. So you can see I'm just setting the maximum value to be zero and so I can move the fader and then if we hit state that turns the drone on and we can use the fader to control the volume of the drone. And if we want to turn the drone off we can just press state again and it fades out quite naturally. If you come over to here in the drone bus and press this circle, we'll make the drone bus stereo, which is really something I should have done at the start. So now I'm going to select the level meter next to the drone bus and I'm going to map this to the level parameter essentially. So I'm going to go to drone bus, which is number eight, and I'm going to press level. And now when I control the volume with a fader, you can see the level meter next to the drone bus responds appropriately. So just turning the drone off and back on. So now I'm going to play around with some of the different drone types in this script just to kind of show you what different sounds you can create. So this is essentially the first and the fifth note. This is the first, the fifth, and then the octave above. And then, you know, first octave, fifth above that second octave, and then another octave. So you can just generate some different sounds and it kind of just determines how much frequency content you're going to have. Just to kind of prove it's working outside of the concert level, I've just made a silly patch and I'm just going to turn the drone on. And you can see that the drone stays there infinitely and I can play anything I want. However, there is a problem with this and that is the drone is only playing one particular drone right now. We don't have a way of changing the key essentially. So that's what we're going to work on now. So if we go up here to the C button we created, or C drum pad I should say, that we created earlier, and we map it to the scripter note parameter, then this is what we need to do such that we can really change the key. This can be a bit of a faff, but this is really important to get right. So if we set the parameters to be like that, C, 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 and then inverted Then we've set the C key up correctly. I've just pressed spacebar to kill the pad. So now I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to go to shimmer. Then I'm going to go to mappings. Sorry, go to mappings. And then press drone. Scripter. Set the note. And we'll set the note to D flat this time. Or C sharp. Oh, and now that's behaving a little strangely, isn't it? So this is something I've left in to really make a point of this. So you'll notice when I change back to the C-sharp, it's now set range max to be A for some reason on the C-sharp drum pad. And the way I found, this is just a strange thing that happens, essentially. So we just have to kind of force it to be D-flat again, and then it will have updated it to be D-flat. So if we demonstrate it now, after resetting the state button, this is something you need to do, otherwise it won't work. So if you reset the state button, and then if we test it out, and we swap between the two keys essentially. So you can see it's working, we've got no issues, it's just those two chords we're playing out, which is exactly what we want. So this is really the core functionality at this point of the drone machine. But obviously, 
we want to play in more than just two keys. So now we're going to replicate this. So we're going to go back to the layout mode and we're going to create a load more drum pads. So I'll save you the agony of watching me do this, but I'll just show the procedure a little more so you can kind of get a feel for what I'm doing. So I've created one for D sharp here and I'm just calling the text D sharp and now we've got them all and I've duplicated them. I've grouped them and duplicated them and I've created two rows. And I'm going to move the background back. Sometimes main stage is a bit weird. For example, I couldn't duplicate the first row while the background was there for some reason. And if we just adjust the size a little bit of the background, maybe move the text as well. And let's just rename the text for these ones on the bottom so that we've got, you know, C through to B. And now that's the cosmetic stuff done. So we just need to update the notes essentially on these drum pads such that they correspond with the text. Otherwise, things will get really interesting. So I've just done all that and we've just jumped back into the edit mode. And now we need to repeat all the mappings I've shown you before. So I'm just working with the F key right now. And so if we go back to F, you can see it's made range max A again for some reason. So we have to just change it back and then it's actually updated. And if we repeat the procedure now for F sharp, we just make sure it's F sharp or G flat. So you probably get the idea at this point, so I won't do any more and we'll crack on. So I've just finished the job off. All the buttons are mapped as you would hope. And now it's just time to give it a bit of a test. So I'm just going to check that we're moving up chromatically and nothing weird is happening. So D, yeah, it sounded good. Well, maybe not good, but it's doing what it should do, at least. Now we've got E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and so on. You might wonder why I'm bothering to show this, but I just really out of principle, when you kind of code something or do something, it's always good to try and show a way of just testing it essentially. So if we turn off state, we've turned the drone off, and we've just set G as the new key. And you can see in the program, we've just pressed D, the note is now set to be D. So you can see it's really working, C, it's doing what it should. So I've just moved back to layout to add a really important button. I'd recommend still watching to the end just because there's still a few things that I think are really important to do. So this button is going to be a panic button. So what can occasionally happen in main stage is you might end up with a, a glitch where somehow you end up with notes being lat, notes being lat, notes being la notes being latched so it's really important to have a way of kind of killing all the sound so that you can kind of start at square one again and i'm just going to assign it to an action at concert level and the action is going to be panic make sure you do it at concert level as well that's really important and so when i press this it will kill all midi data and all audio so now let's just give it a go I've just pressed C on the drone generator and I've just turned it on by pressing state as we normally do. And I'm just playing with the envelope a little bit. So now let's change key to D. And let's say we got into A and we're all of a sudden in trouble. We just hit panic and that would kill everything. So if I now press B, that's going to set a new key. And then I press state. And now we could start a song in B, for example. So you can see how this is really useful. So one more thing we're going to add is just a little bit of cosmetics. Just add some text that says drone generator. So just type in drone generator and expand it out a bit. And yeah, all good. So now final test. Let's see how easy it is to change key with a piano, for example. I'm using musical typing, so it sounds pretty basic, but you can still hear what's going on. So now we're just in C.
we hit C sharp. And it's pretty seamless. And that's chromatic transition, so, you know, probably one of the most difficult to do. Now we're into A. So it works like a charm, really. I hope that's been really helpful. I went a bit faster in this tutorial, so please leave any questions in the comments you might have. And with that said, have a great day and God bless.